Hello and welcome to a look at the future value of money with me, Andy Duncan, here at Finlingo.com. The future value of money is a deceptively simple yet sneakily complex subject, and it underlies all of modern finance. Let's try out a simple thought experiment. Here's my nephew, Tommy. If I say to Tommy, would you like a sweet today or would you like a sweet tomorrow? He's most likely to say he'd like a sweet right now. This is because of time preference. People prefer good things to happen to them sooner rather than later. So what if we ask him about two sweets tomorrow rather than one sweet today? Tommy still says he'd much rather have one sweet today. He's just turned down an interest rate of 100% per day, which is some astronomical interest rate over a year. But that's his privilege. What we'd like to do is find out exactly how strong his time preference is, and we measure this with interest rates. The higher Tommy's personal interest rate for sweets over each day, the higher his time preferences are. So how do we find out his personal interest rate? We offer him different amounts of sweets. When he can't decide between one sweet today or some sweets tomorrow, we'll have worked out his personal interest rate. So I offer him 10 sweets tomorrow, and he says yes, he'll give up one sweet today to get 10 sweets tomorrow. But can I go lower? What if I offer him four sweets tomorrow? No, nope, he says he'd rather have one right now. Hmm. So how about five sweets tomorrow? Now he's a bit puzzled. He can't decide and scratches his head. He needs a coin to toss to figure out his choice. And now we've found the magic. we found his personal interest rate, which is 500% per day. To Tommy, one sweet today is worth exactly five sweets tomorrow. To him, they've got the same value. They're equivalent. Yes, it's different numeric amounts, but they are equal in value given some function of time and interest rates. And we can see this in the future value equation, which is the future value is equal to the present value multiplied by one plus the interest rate raised to the power of the number of periods. We'll see this on an Excel spreadsheet in a couple of minutes. Generally, adults have much lower time preferences than children like Tommy and can work over much longer periods of time, but the principle remains the same. Here's my brother, Johnny. He's got a personal interest rate when lending money to me of 20% per year. He's indifferent between $100 now or $120 in a year's time. Knowing this interest rate, I can calculate any future value given the present value or cash right now, the time period and the relevant interest rate. All I need is the function driven by time and interest rates. So if Johnny invests $100 today at 20% a year, what's the expected future value of the investment in three years time? We can first of all do it by hand. 100 raised by 20% goes to 120. We roll that back into the investment, get another 20% over the next year, and that goes to 144. We leave that in the pot, we roll it over, we get another 20% interest, and that takes it to 172.8. And that is doing it by hand. But let's put the same figures into the equation to do it much quicker on that cunning spreadsheet I mentioned earlier. First, we input $100, then 20%, then raise this to the power three and this gives us exactly $172.8, just like when we did it manually. Now let's try a question on finlingo.com. Get the correct information, ignore anything trying to catch us out, plug the numbers into the equation, then look for the right answer on Finlingo. Keep going with the infinite questions until you've burned this equation into your brain. Go now to finlingo.com where you can answer these infinite questions on both future values and many other financial analysis topics. Finlingo. Speak finance fluently.